everybody doing today? My name is Julie Burgundy, and I'm the Public Education Coordinator here at the Dole Institute of Politics in Lawrence, Kansas. And I'm glad you guys are joining us here today. And uh, as we get started, let me just pull up something here on the computer to see. And great. Uh, so if you followed us in previous programs at the Dole Institute, we've talked about the American flag, and about what an archive is, and uh, we've looked at some photographs. So we're gonna be continuing that on today. And uh, just give you a quick recap of, have we seen this guy before? Yes, this is Senator Bob Dole, and we're gonna be uh, discussing about him today in his military service. So today's title of the program is Service to Country, Bob Dole in World War II. So we'll be definitely talking about uh, his World War II career. And then we can learn all of this from the archives. And so here's a picture of the stacks downstairs. If you want a behind the scenes look at the stacks, be sure to check out our first video that we filmed a couple weeks ago. And today I would like to, to show you the veterans memory wall. So I'm actually gonna switch it around here. And as we walk in the beautiful museum, we talked about that Russell window. And remember the, the state of Kansas is here on the floor. But if we look up, we can see the veterans memory wall. Now there's lots and lots of pictures and I know the camera may not be the best at getting all these photographs in focus. But can you, Take a guess of how many photographs are up here. These are all World War II veterans who served from the state of Kansas. So they were the born here, or lived most of their life here. And these are about the first thousand or so that were submitted to us by loved ones when we opened the building in 2003. However, we have an additional 3,800 in addition to this. So almost 5,000 all together of veterans who served during World War II. And so I invite you to submit your own loved one on our veterans database if you'd like to do so. But I also want to zoom in on a, a few special ones here. And so in this view, you can see two out of the three veterans that we're going to be discussing today. Now, I got an I Spy contest for you. Towards the bottom, do you see a photograph of a man with his arms at his side? And he's wearing a hat. And we know since these are all veterans from Kansas, he is a Kansas native. Do you guys see the guy with his hands on his hips? Hmm, let me help you a little because I know it might be a little bumpy. I'm gonna give you a picture of that up close. So here is a picture of that man with his arms on his hips, and that is General Dwight Eisenhower. You may know him as President Eisenhower, and during the World, uh, World War II, he was the Supreme Commander of the Allied Expeditionary Force in Europe. And so we know they're gonna be talking about a young Bob Dole who's also in the army. So this is Dole's bosses, 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 <laughs> all the way up. And he is the Supreme Commander of the Allied Force in Europe. Another veteran that's on that wall that was on the right side of that before we switched to this specific picture is this gentleman. And he is a part of the Dole family. And this is known as Bob Dole's little brother, Kenny. Kenny served in the South Pacific and also came, came home. Uh, he uh, uh, ended his service in 1946 after the war was over. Now the last one I want you to look at is this picture. Now I'm not gonna give you any hints on this photograph. I want you to make a guess on who this could be. But remember, don't think too hard. 
This is a young Bob Dole. Very good, you found him. <laughs> and this picture was taken when he was about 21 years old. So we're gonna be discussing and showing more pictures of him today. But I also wanted to show you this flag here. This is hanging in our museum. And the caption says, two stars for two brothers. Like millions of American households, the Doles of Russell gave more than one family member to the war effort. The two-star flag marked their absence from home and anticipated their safe return. Shown here in wartime photos, Bob and his younger brother, Kenny, briefly trained together at Camp Barkley in Texas. Bob went on to the Italian Theater of Operations, and Kenny went to the South Pacific and the campaign to liberate the Philippines. He earned several medals before his January 1946 discharge. Talking about Kenny, and there is the original flag that hung in the Dole household. And so uh, discussing uh, veterans and the greatest generation is very important to us here at the Dole Institute. And uh, so we're gonna be today talking about Senator Dole service, but it is very important uh, for all of us to remember the, all of those other veteran stories. And uh, we honor that with our veterans gala every year here at the Dole Institute. It's a very big party with big band music and uh, symphony orchestra and all that. And it's very important to you know, think about all those veterans who, who served our country. But first let's talk about uh, a young Bob Dole and his service. So remember last week we learned that he grew up in Russell and went here to the University of Kansas. And when Bob was here at KU in Lawrence, he, wanted, he was a pre-med major. He wanted to be a surgeon. And that was his goals uh, for his college career. But then in December of 1941, Pearl Harbor happened and the United States was catapulted into World War II. And so the next year, uh, Dole and his fraternity buddies enlisted in the Army and uh, eventually was sent off to different training camps uh, in 1943. At first, he was in a medical corps training and then an anti-tank gunnery training and then uh, went to officer's training school and eventually graduated as a second lieutenant in the Army in a leadership position. And he went off and was shipped to Italy, and where he saw fighting. And in April of 1945, just a few weeks before the end of World War II in Europe, Bob Dole was shot with shrapnel in the back and the shoulder. And he actually laid out on the battlefield for over eight hours before they could come and retrieve him, because the fighting was so intense. And so he uh, laid there, waiting to be rescued, and, but since he was shot and uh, he also couldn't move from his position. Uh, but eventually when he did get picked up, he went straight to the hospital, went through surgeries, and of course this injury changed his life forever. He was in hospitals and therapy uh, for over three and a half years, in and out of um, clinics and such like that, and was actually given three surgeries by Dr. K, Dr. Hampar Kalikian, who's an Armenian doctor who um, didn't tell Senator Dole that he was going to regain all of his abilities, but he could help maybe a little bit. And uh, Dr. K didn't take any money for any of his surgeries. Uh, he wanted to, to give back. And uh, Senator Dole now says that he's Dr. Eric Kalikian is a great friend and he definitely helped him out uh, even in his uh, time of need. And so Dole's injury happened on April 14th, 1945. Today is April 13th, 2020. Now if we were to do some math, and 2020 minus 1945, does anybody know how many years ago that was? Hmm, it might be a big number. Can you guys count that high? So 2020, to 1945, how many years ago was that? Hmm, I think that's about 75 years. So 75 years ago tomorrow is uh, the day that changed Senator Dole's life. And it changed the trajectory of his career 
uh, if he wanted to be a surgeon. And obviously after his injury, uh, I said he went through therapy and all of that, and he did lose the use of his right arm. So he still has it, but he kind of holds it here at all times. He can't do a lot with it. So he had to learn how to tie his shoes and button his buttons and write and eat all with his left hand. So obviously that changed his life a little and also changed his career goals. So he couldn't be a surgeon if you can't use both of your, your arms, but he still wanted to serve his country. And so Senator Dole uh, eventually graduated from Washburn University and became a lawyer and uh, served in the Kansas State Legislature and then the United States House of Representatives and the United States Senate. So even though he couldn't be a surgeon, he still wanted to apply himself and still wanted to serve our country. That's very inspiring. And so I want to show you a few pictures of Senator Dole and his uh, military time. So here's the first one. Actually, the first one that you saw up on the wall in the veteran's memory wall there. And here's another one in his uniform. And this is after he graduated from officer's training school. And then here's a picture that with his shirt off, he weighed 192 pounds. He's a good looking uh, army guy right here. Showing off all his muscles. As we know, he was on the basketball team, football team, track team, so he did keep pretty fit. And here's a, a picture of many veterans here and during their, their uh, time in Italy. And if you look on the very far left picture, sorry, very far left person of this picture, we have a man in a tannish jacket on the very far left with no helmet, no hat on. That is a young second lieutenant Dole. And then I mentioned his injury, and so here's his injury. And he uh, eventually, after he left Italy, he was sent to Percy Jones Army Hospital in Battle Creek, Michigan. And then he also did some of his re rehabilitation at Winter General Hospital in Topeka. And so you can kind of see that his right arm is injured. It's laying across the front of his body, and there's a towel rolled up to keep his hand there, to extend his fingers out. But here is a happy picture of him uh, getting better and having high hopes and, and knew he needed to, to beat this. And here is a photograph of Bob and his mother, Bina, outside the family house in Russell. And you can see his right arm there is straddled across his body. So at this point, he is completely using his left hand to you know, write and eat and all of that, or at least learning how to do those things again, because it was a very long rehabilitation process. And then here are here he is working out on his parents' garage, and you can kind of see his right shoulder there is a little peaked, but there's those pulleys, and we have those pulleys here in the museum. I'm going to take you around and show you that. So here are those exact same pulleys along with the picture that you see there. So these are the springs. We have the weight system downstairs in the archive. And then we also have his uniform or one of the uniforms. Now this is not the uniform that he was wearing when he was injured, but this is a dress uniform. And then also Purple Heart and Bronze Star for his courage and valor in war and his identification dog tags. 
And if you'd like to learn more about Senator injury and things, uh, we also have the Dole family letters from World War II. And we're gonna be discussing that in a second. But I also wanted to show you, moving over here, there's that beautiful flag. He also was awarded some other medals and he was a part of the 10th Mountain Division. Do you guys see the blue and red swords in this picture? That is the insignia or the logo of 10th Mountain Division. That was the division that he was a part of. Here is the entire exhibit case on his World War II service. And so he was injured right outside of Bologna, Italy on a hill called Hill 913. And so I mentioned that we're going to be discussing uh, some letters. And here is a letter from the archive. And this is a box of letters to and from Dole to his mother and father. And some of them are handwritten, some of them are on stationery. Some of them are written, do you think this was written on a computer? Or something else? Hmm, this looks a little before computers. I wonder what it is. It looks like we got lots of letters here. But I wanted to look at this picture. And just like when we looked at some photographs, we had some questions that we needed to fill out of who and what and where and why, why these are important. And so I want you to briefly look at this primary source analysis sheet because do you think we're gonna be looking at a newspaper? or a photograph, or a letter. Probably a letter. We also want to figure out who made this, why did they make it, when, what are some important points that we can observe from this letter. So keep that in mind. So here is the letter itself, and we're just going to read it. So it's on the very top right, it says July 10th, 1943. So remember his injury happened on, Ju uh, sorry, not July, April 14th, 1945. So this is a couple years before his injury. And it says, dear folks, by the time you get this, I will be somewhere on a train, though I don't know where it will be. I got my orders last night and I'm leaving this afternoon at 3.30. I haven't any idea where I'm going, but I'm sure glad to get out of this place and get started on something. I have a hunch that I'll go to Texas, but it's just a hunch. I would have liked to come home this weekend, but there isn't any chance of that now. Kenny is in the same company that I am here, and I'm trying to get him a pretty easy job. Today, he's on fire guard. He works two hours and sleeps four, and continues that procedure for 24 hours. He looks nicer in his uniform than I did, and I think that he's going to like the Army Five. He's with all the rest of the Russell boys, and I imagine that they will all be shipped out at the same time, so they should get along all right. If he gets the job that I had, all he'll have to do is sit around and write letters and listen to the radio. I hope Grace doesn't come to Russell this weekend hoping to see me there. I told her not to plan on coming unless I called her, so I imagine that she will now stay in Hutchinson. It's 12.30 now, and I have a lot of things to do before I leave, so I guess I better stop writing and start getting ready. I wish I knew which way we were, going, we were going we might go through, Russell or Hutchinson, but I doubt it. I'll write as soon as I have time and I get to basic training. Kenny had a little tough luck on his IQ test. He made only a 109, which is good, but it isn't quite good enough to enter officer's training. I think that he'll have a chance to take it over when he gets to basic training, so he'll probably do much better. He did about as well as any of the other boys, so he didn't feel too bad about it. I guess I'll have to take a rain check on the fried chicken and ice cream, but I'll be home plenty soon enough, I guess. I think about Christmas. 
Kenny should get a furlough about the same time, so it should be pretty nice. Goodbye. Tell Glory and Larry that I will write them as soon as I have enough time. Love, Bob. So this is a letter that we have in our archives, and it looks like we have a lot to uncover. We need to find all these clues. So as I mentioned, it's in July of 1943. So this is uh, before he has really done much of his training for the Army. He's just getting started, but he's writing a letter to his folks. What does folks mean? You got any ideas? Hmm, folks sometimes is referred to as a large group of people, maybe if you don't know a group of people, but it also means a specific set of people. And you might have folks right now in your house next to you. Yeah, folks are your parents, your mom and dad. So he's writing to his mom and dad, and he mentioned he's somewhere on a train. He doesn't know where he is exactly, but he might go to Texas. And then he talks about Kenny. Do you remember who Kenny is again? Yeah, Kenny is his little brother. And it sounds like if he, on the very last sentence of the second paragraph, it says, if he got the job I, that I had, all I have to do is sit around, write letters, listen to the radio. Doesn't it kind of sound uh, like Bob wants to take care of his little brother? Yeah, get him a pretty easy job. He wants to take care of him, wants to keep him safe. Now, who could Grace be in the third paragraph? I hope Grace doesn't come to Russell this weekend. Hmm. It's not his sister. His sister's named Gloria, and her name's at the very bottom. And he has another sister named Norma Jean, but not a sister named Grace. Hmm. And we know it's probably not his mom, because he's writing to his mom and dad. And his mom's name is Bina. So what other person could it be? Well, Grace is his girlfriend, actually. His girlfriend from KU. And so they uh, started dating before he left for the army. And of course he wants to see his girlfriend, but it says they didn't make plans unless he called her. Did they have phones in 1943? Yeah, they had phones, but did they have cell phones? No. They couldn't make uh, plans as, as well as we could, you know, today in 2020. Uh, can you imagine your life without cell phones? How would you communicate with people? Write them letters, I guess. <laughs> so yes, letter writing, uh, was definitely an art form uh, up until just a few decades ago. And now we don't write as many letters, especially on uh, stationery and uh, on a typewriter. Uh, Cause yeah, this wasn't written on a computer, right? No, it's a typewriter. One of those old fangled things that has lots of different keys and you have to put the paper in and it has to be ink on them. Also on this, with a typewriter, do you see some mistakes that were made in this letter? Do you see those bold word, bold letters kind of near the middle of the page? Like, I told her not to. It looks like that two has two O's. And then it has two T's over it. So it looks like you made a mistake. But can you just delete super easily like you can on a computer that you could with a typewriter? No. So we can see all those cool artifacts of this letter of being written on a typewriter. So yeah, there's some mistakes in here, but he tried to fix them. Now my favorite paragraph is the last one. I guess I'll have to wait to take a rain check on the fried chicken and ice cream. So that sounds like some of Dole's favorite foods. I like ice cream a lot too. He says, I'll be home plenty soon enough, I guess. Think about Christmas. Huh. So what month is Christmas in? We celebrate in December. Well, when was this letter written? This letter was written in July. 
That's a long time. So he's writing this letter in July and he doesn't think he'll be home to see his parents and his family until Christmas. That's a long time to be away from your family. But I would definitely want fried chicken and ice cream. Too bad his mom can't send it in the mail. <laughs> she might be able to send cookies and things. I know she did, but ice cream might be a little hard. That fried chicken might not be as good either. <laughs> but what would you say to your family if you were gone for months at a time and not able to see them? That seems really tough. And so especially now when you are probably at home a lot with your family, I want you to think about if you weren't able to see your family and how sad that could be and think about what you would write them in a letter. Because you can't just talk to them next to you on your couch. Think about what you would write in a letter to convey how much you love your family and why they're important to you. I think that's really important. So you can practice your letter writing skills and maybe uh, just writing in general, of writing out your name and all that. That sounds really like a good idea. And so I, uh, do you guys have any more questions about this letter? Are there any words that you may not understand are kind of confusing? I also love at the bottom that he wrote out, love, Bob. Now, this is in 1943, so do you think he wrote this with his right hand or his left hand? This is actually written with his right hand, so he was originally right-handed, and we learned today about his injury happened in 1945, so a couple years after this, and after that period, he had to learn how to write with his left hand. So this is a, uh, a unique item from the archive that shows his original handwriting, because his handwriting did change a little bit uh, after his injury. So I'm gonna stop that letter, and uh, I wanna show you uh, for the big kids in the room, uh, if you're interested in learning more about his story, uh, One Soldier Story is the World War II memoir written by Senator Dole. And it's very inspiring, it's very easy to read, and very compelling. And uh, he has a quote on the back that says, the real heroes of World War II are the men and women who never came back. If there was anything heroic about my story, it is my recovery from the wounds I received. I could not have made it without help, lots of it, from fellow soldiers, doctors, loved ones, friends, and others. None of us who travels the valleys of life ever walks alone. So very inspiring tale, and uh, as you know, Senator Dole went on to uh, the legislature and uh, helped um, change our country and make laws for our country, and uh, very much indebted to him. And so my activity for you for this week is we've talked all about veterans and how they're very important in protecting our country and protecting our community. So I would like you to write a thank you note to a veteran and uh, thanking them for their service and their sacrifice even. Uh, uh, considering this coronavirus situation, you can also write a thank you note to all of our first responders and our doctors and nurses. That sounds like a great idea. So let's get out those coloring uh, markers and pencils, draw pretty pictures, and say thank you to all those people who are helping us. All right. Well, next time we're going to be discussing Elizabeth Dole, uh, a woman of first. So if you want to learn more about her, tune in on Wednesday at 2 o'clock on Facebook Live. And remember, all these are recorded and put up on our YouTube page the next day. So uh, be sure to check us out. All right. Till next time, guys. See ya.